you're welcome to another video and in this video we're going to be learning about functions in zig so i recently switched to the helix editor because i wanted to learn something new i wanted to stick close to working with terminals so the latest editor that i'm gonna be using is going to be helix of course you can continue to use vs code it's still gonna work as expected but i just wanted to challenge myself and learn something new so I decided to switch to the Helix editor. So I'm still learning the editor, so I'm not super familiar with it or productive in anything for now, but hey. So I'm going to open up the project using Helix, and of course, I could open up the main.zig file here. So, like I said in this video, we're going to learn about functions. So, we're going to learn about functions, what to name your functions, and the rules of how you can name your functions. What does functions contain, you know, statements and everything, return types and parameters and things like that. So first of all, what are functions? Functions are reusable pieces of code. So they're usually just blocks of code that we can reuse multiple times in our program. OK, so, so a function is something that you can put um, some statements in to perform you know those operations and then they can optionally return a value so for example a uh, main function that we see here uh, this is actually the entry point to our program so the operating system is going to call this function to start executing our program and whatever whatever it is you have inside of these curly braces is going to be the body of the function so a function is going to have is going the body of a function is going to consist of multiple statements so statements are simply just something like for example scd log.info you know and then logging something out so so this is a statement for example so a statement is just you know something that you should already get used to so right um right okay so a function can contain one or more statements and before we get into statements though I need to get back to name your rules so how do you name your functions what are the rules that you have to follow to be able to create a function so we already know how we create our main function and to do that that is actually really simple um, I need to delete this All right so to create our function to create a new function we have an optional visibility modifier we have the fn keyword so i'm going to create a function here just to show you exactly how it's done so we already have our main function like i said and so we're going to create a function that takes two numbers adds them together and gives us back a result so to do that we're going to have a visibility modifier so a visibility modifier is for example we're trying to make our function public so this file this main dot zig file is a module in zig okay so a module is simply just like a a grouping of you know functions and structs and whatever so this this file is a module so if you want this function to be accessible by other files in your code then you can prefix it with this pop keyword so if you want it to be private to this module if you want your function to not be able to be accessed by other files because you know everything the function needs to do it should be self-contained in this module then you could leave off the pub modifiers to say hey this is going to be private to this module and then you could have the fun so this fn keyword is simply saying that we are trying to define a function or we're declaring a function so we're going to have add so this is going to be the name of the function so a function has, starts with this fn keyword or optionally a visibility modifier then we have the name of the function in this case it's called add and then we have the parenthesis so the parenthesis is where you're going to specify any arguments um, to the function so in our case here we have two arguments and we could have a which is good so we need to specify the type of the um, argument that we want to receive so this is going to be i32 and b is also going to be i32 and after 
specifying the arguments or parameters, whatever you want to call it, then we have to specify a return type. So a function can take in as many arguments as you want. And when you want to, when you perform whatever computation you're performing, then you're going to return a result back to the caller. So the results that you're going to return, you have to specify the type. So in this case, we're still going to return an I32. And once we're done specifying the function on its body, then we're going to specify, uh, once we're done specifying the function declaration, then we're going to put this open and close embrace. So inside of here is where we're going to define all the statements that make up this function. So in our case, it's a very simple thing to do. We're just going to have a var result equals a plus b and then we're going to return result of course we could condense this into just one statement by just returning a plus b but i just wanted to show you what it means to have statements in your program in your function so here you see we have a variable declaration called result and we say this is equal to a plus b so this is going to evaluate these two uh, this expression and it's going to turn it and it's going to save the result of this expression into this variable and so this is a statement this is one thing that the function just executed and then we're taking that result and we're saying hey we're done with this computation we want to return the result back to whoever called this function so that's exactly what we're going to do right now so what we're going to do is we're going to say ver res equal to add so what i'm doing is i am calling this function so i'm calling this function by the name i'm simply saying hey i want to add something so as you can see we have some help from the editor here which is showing us the parameters that make up you know this function's definition and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add 30 plus 40 and i'm gonna put a semicolon at the end now i want you to notice something that for Every statement in your program for zig it is terminated using this semicolon. So whenever you see a statement terminated with a semicolon, or whenever you find a semicolon in zig it's mostly a statement. You've made a statement and its statements are terminated by semicolon. So that's how you identify statements in zig. So once I have my variable res, you can see it's saying that on use local variable, so I have to use the result. So what I'm going to do is std log print and uh, sorry std log info add in um, 30 plus 40 is going to equal to rise. And so the add function takes those two parameters you know, adds them together, returns a result and we get that result and we print it out here. So if I save that and I just do zig build run. And what is this? This is okay. So there is, I forgot something here. I forgot the, the um, brace to specify the placeholder parameter. All right, so that should work now and there we go so adding 30 plus 40 is equal to 70 and there you go so you can see that a function can take parameters can take return uh can return values so if you have any function that does not you can have a function that does not take any parameters or does not return any value so for example, you could mix and match all of this. So in this case, print name is going to take in a parameter, um, which is going to be a const array of u8, which is basically just a slice of u8. We're going to talk about slices in later videos. And as you can see here in the return value section, I specify void. So void is simply saying that this function is not going to return anything. And I can do std.log.info again. And then I'm gonna specify, I wanna specify that this is a string and name. So now what I can do here is to just call print name. And what this is going to do, so I'm gonna specify my name. Uh, so this is the argument that we have for the name here. So this is what I just passed in the print name. And if I do zig build run, 
you're going to see that the name that's going to come out is going to be Adebayo. And as you can see, this function just printed the name without actually returning a result. So, yeah. So another thing you need to know is name your rules for functions. So how do you name your functions? In order to be able to properly name functions in Zig, you have to use either uppercase or lowercase characters, A to Z, and underscores. So those are the combinations that you can use. You can you can have um, special characters like dollar signs, dollar. You can have special characters like dollar signs or uh, hyphens. It's not gonna work. So you have you can use underscores anywhere you want in your function names. It's gonna work as you might expect. Um, but you cannot have uh, you cannot have dollar signs and stuff like that. I mean you cannot have you know special special characters in your function name so it's, it's gonna be like lowercase uppercase a to z characters and underscores and when you're writing function names in zig it's a convention it's not a rule it's just a convention that you use um camel case to write function names so camel case is just a way of saying that you know when you write when you're trying to write something that is a multi uh, like it's multiple words for example print name here if I was if I was gonna write in English I probably have a space here like print name but because this is not a, an English uh, whatever and this is not a valid way to write a function in uh, in any programming language whatsoever so you have to oh my god right sorry so you have to I thought I made a big mistake there. So you have to have um, this. So it's a capitalization after the first word. And so that's that's how you write. That's what comic kiss is. And if you, but if you really, really want to have like, I don't know, spaces between your function names, Zig allows you to do that. And it's using this at um, quotes start and end. So what you can do with that is you could have something like this. So we could have a function that actually has this print name, whatever. And how do we call this function? We could we could do it like this print name. And as you can see, there is no errors anymore because this is actually a valid name. So you can use this for your variables, you can use it for functions. I'm not sure why you would want to do this, but it, it it's really cool that you can do something like this um, in Zig. So if just to show you that this works, I could run this program again and you're gonna see that we're gonna get the same uh, printed out as Adibayo just as you might expect. So that'll be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.